it's the beginning of September. How did that happen? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Irene with Brainstorm Makers, and it is the beginning of September. That seems such an odd thing to say. This has been such a weird year. We've had the strangest growing season I think we've ever had. And then there's the rest of the world, of course. Henry and I were talking about the fact that we needed to do another garden update. So here I am. This is my flower garden. I think of it as my cottage garden. And I have plants in various stages of uh, array and disarray. A few weeds have snuck in. I can see one here that used to be here. <laughs> super, super pleased with a bunch of these. These dianthus were all transplanted from farther down the bed where they had been totally mangled by the gophers. And based on the number of seed pods that we have here, I suspect we'll probably have some pretty good Oh, I can see all the seeds. Wow, that is awesome. I think I'm probably going to steal some of these. I've been very impressed with some of the plants I planted last year. These are called Crazy, and they're a zinnia from Johnny's. And I have never had zinnias come back. I know that some people say they have really good luck with them, but I never have them come back, and these came back. I was just so delighted to see some zinnias, any zinnias, pop up in here, because I really did not have time to spend on my flower garden this year, which I was very disappointed in, because I like to make progress every year. And the only thing I did manage to do was to transplant this dianthus when I was clearing the beds farther down. So when I saw zinnias, I was thrilled. I was gonna be thrilled about any kind of a zinnia, but what I got was I got crazy, and I love crazy because crazy is just this crazy looking zinnia that has all these different colors and it's a little on the exotic side for zinnia, and I really enjoyed it. The dianthus have just been spectacular, as have the um, bachelor buttons. So I am really happy with this. Made some good progress this year didn't try and do anything other than beat back the weeds. I still need to yank this guy out. He's starting to go to seed. I don't even know what that is, to be honest. I think it was a J. Random plant that came in. It may have actually been, uh, that may have actually been parsley that was going to seed. But yeah, I am really pleased with these dianthus. And I have a ton of seeds in here. I'm going to encourage these to come in in greater abundance because why I, I like the violas and I love the violets it is time to add some more stuff in here a lot of our plants like the hollyhocks usually bloom really until solid frost and it's just been so weird that they these bloomed and then they all croaked off I've got lots of seeds there it's not my favorite color, I have to admit. It's uh, it's okay, but it's not my favorite color. It's, uh, it's called Black Watch, and it's... <sighs> I don't want to say it's boring. That's, uh, that's unkind to the plant, but it's almost black, and that just doesn't suit me. I want something with some more zing to it. So I want to get a couple more uh, hollyhocks started in here for next year that are more likely to be pink or rose or white or something or combination. I like a combo. I like to have st tall stuff along the back. Uh, we do have new things still coming up. I've still got more dianthus coming up. I can see there's some more zinnias coming up in here. And there's a there's another uh, <laughs> attack of the killer plant here. There's another uh, California poppy here. There's, you know, there's all kinds of odd bits and pieces. So it's not over yet, which is great, because normally our first frost is not until about October 15th. They are forecasting a warm September. And so far, the forecast is holding true. We're probably 10 degrees warmer than we should be at this time of year. 
So we'll see. Uh, our forecasts have been extremely unreliable this year. We never got, we have not gotten our full monsoon. We normally have at least one rainfall of four inches. Has not happened. We've had a total of six tenths of an inch of rain since March, or for this month, I guess it is now, because uh, we did have a little bit more, but yeah. But let's go show you what's going on with the veggies. We're sort of in a transition period right now. And it's time for me to clear out some things. This section here was veggies earlier and it has been taken over by uh, violas and there's a couple of uh, other miscellaneous things in here. This is Love in a Mist. And when it's done blooming, let's see, do we have any Love in a Mist flowers right now? Yeah, these haven't bloomed yet. But it'll make seed pods like this, which are awesome for dried flower arranging. Um, some people spray paint them orange and green and I mean all kinds of silver gold are very common things to be plant. I'm like mm, I kind of like them great but <laughs> it's just me I don't usually go much for those accent colors that are that people spray in there uh, this was mostly this was mostly spinach in here and it's kind of it it was harvested down a bunch of times we did we were very happy with it but it's that end of summer thing and the summer and the spinach has kind of gone the way of the wind we do have one cabbage in here that I need to go ahead and harvest. <laughs> this cat just scared me, jumped up on the table behind me. Anyway, <laughs> I need to go ahead and harvest this guy. Uh, I told Henry, let's make some slaw out of him. The pak choy and stuff like that have had leaves taken off that were in here. And there's a couple of um, kohlrabi left in here, but they're definitely past their best of use by date. So I'm going to pull these guys out. We have odd stuff still slowing up. We have, this needs to come out. This is white whorehound, um, which is a plague in our area. It is a perennial, so if I let it go, it will become invasive. Here we have a love of the mist that is in the process of blooming. So this really cool blue flower will become this really cool pod. And I think I have a dried pod on one of the others that I'll show you when I get over there. It's very cool, very cool. Uh, that is uh, California poppy. These are violas. This is more love in a mist. So my plan is actually to come in here and be a little brutal. I will pick the violas and they make a very good cut flower. Um, I'm going to leave the... <sighs> Hi Isa, are you helping me? She says, yes, I'm helping. You're over here. You must be having something exciting to do. Issa does not have rules in her mind firmly about not stepping on things. <laughs> so I have to scoot her out of here. So let's go. Come on. Ugh. I know I'm such a meanie. Anyway, this is a bachelor button. I'll believe him. But most of this I just plain need to clear out, except for the, and the cabbage will harvest. I've already harvested the sunflowers that were back here. <sighs> These are not going to seed or anything strange. These are broccoli. These are mini broccolis. And we're getting little spears of broccoli off of them. And we've eaten them. And they've been delicious. So we're not going to get a huge amount out of that. But it's been really kind of a fun experiment. And considering how brutally hot it was... The fact that these things didn't just give up and die months ago is sort of a miracle. We did specifically plant them in the shade here, so that helped a lot. This is a wild sunflower that's coming up here, so I'm going to get rid of him. I don't want to encourage these over here. We did allow some to go in the yard, and that's okay. Uh, I'm quite allergic to the silly things, but they're gorgeous. These guys have had their past the best of fuse by date. These are also... Um, Doot, doot, doot. Pak choy. And there's a couple of beets under here I need to pull. They're probably a bit on the woody side. This area was a bit neglected, but we, to be honest, we, we planted a little bit too much, and most of it is not things that we could preserve. So that was a learning experience this summer, uh, how to not plant too much. And now I, <laughs> I know I won't completely get that one. Uh, this is a, rhub a rhubarb. It was a, a gift from Lisa multiple years ago. Here's another bachelor button cornflower, call them what you will. 
doing well. I need to harvest my onions. These have done super well. These were little bulbs that I grew myself and needed some place to stick. And obviously, if you look at the size of that against my hand, that's a good size onion. So I need to, and the tops have come over a bit. So I need to harvest those and dry them and they'll be ready. Uh, I have a pak choy here that needs just plain get ripped out. He's going to seed and I don't want him to seed in here. This was also, um, this was also spinach and we ate it and ate it and ate it and ate it and then I eventually pulled it when it started to bolt. The violas have come in with great enthusiasm and I hate to say they need to go but they need to go. So I'm going to be picking a couple of big viola um, <laughs> bouquets here. These are leeks and I have one that's gone to seed unfortunately but yeah I need to check and see if these were I don't think these were <sighs> hybrids but yeah I need to decide what I'm going to do with those guys worst case we'll pull them and eat them <laughs> which is not a bad thing we really like leeks and they're quite expensive in the store so yeah lots and lots and lots of violas more rhubarb the sunflower sticks back here have already been harvested I have a bunch of small sunflower seed heads that I'm saving and I will be putting those out for the birds we have goldfinches couldn't think of the word that have started coming in now which is that change of season thing the peppermint that's underneath here is coming back nicely that's what all of this stuff is here and this is also peppermint it was originally in the center bed and I transplanted some over here because the center bed was getting mashed by gophers. So I just let this come in here and run loose. It's been great. I've been using it when I make tatiki for Henry this summer. This is our squash, one of our squash and cucumber beds. This was made from rotted straw bales. It has done really well. It's looking shaggy now, but I'm still getting harvest. I'm allowing the, the fruits to grow a little bit larger. So like right now there's a yellow in here I'll harvest tomorrow and there's a bunch more yellows here the plants have really slowed down in terms of production there I was getting two or three a day and now I'm letting them grow a little bit larger for a while there I was literally harvesting them and then when they would get to this size as soon as the flower had closed I would harvest them but this was yellow squash Two different types of zucchini, uh, patty pan. See, there's a patty pan. I probably actually should harvest this one today. This is all cucumbers in the back, which are looking kind of shaggy. We're getting a small dribble of cucumbers off these right now, and I'm letting it go. It's uh, I'm still taking some babies off there to make into baby dills and things like that. Just fun sort of stuff. Not worrying about it. Henry has more cucumbers than he can eat right now still. So, and we're seeing there's another zucchini down in there. I've already harvested in here today. I'm just sort of letting some things get a little bit bigger. This bed has not produced anything except for cucumbers so far, but we have a lot of stuff in process and I'm checking every day to make sure that nothing's getting overripe. And this is what we're waiting for with great ambition and excitement is our cantaloupes. I've never had cantaloupes come off this late. Oh, we have a ladybug in here too. We have all kinds of bugs, so it doesn't surprise me that we should have a few happy little ladybugs in here. I did not spray in here when I should have. The, we, the cucumber beetles were terrible this summer, and we're suffering the results of it now. But it's also getting to be the end of the summer, so it's a kind of a trade-off. Anyway, so here's we have a bunch of these guys in here. There's one up there hanging. There's another one there hanging. And some of these are big really big I mean this is not the biggest one and yet you can see how big it is that's you know that's a solid seven eight inch beast there and there's another one that's even bigger in here and another one that's hanging up on the on the uh, trellis because that makes a lot of sense and the rest of them are mostly tucked down in underneath. But we're, we're excited, we're excited. We've had very good success with cantaloupes 
other locations around the United States. In Massachusetts, we used to actually get to the point where we couldn't eat them all, even with two children at home. And we used to make sorbet to store it for later, which is a great way to store a lot of different kinds of melons, by the way, because you can make a, a fruit sorbet with them, which then goes into your freezer. And you know, in January, when you're dying for any good fresh fruit, you can pull that out and have a nice fruit sorbet. Hi, grasshopper. You are not welcome. <laughs> Go somewhere else. Yeah.